Hey guys, Lexi here. I'm Lady J. And it's time for some kick ass and coffee. Oh Man, my we have so oh my much to talk about today. <laughs> it has been such a night for news, like shocking big news. So let's get some fight buzz going. Yes. Alrighty, after being away from pro wrestling since 2014, CM Punk returned, as we know, last August of 2021, and he's been a part of like a few feuds. We've seen a lot of him recently, especially last night on Dynamite, and he's worked with so many different, um, like so many different wrestlers, and there were some false rumors that went around, so... I yeah. let Jay tell you about that. Uh, well, so we're still talking about the Royal Rumble, even though it was last weekend. But CM Punk, freaking punking everybody. <laughs> and he was like, I'm going to stir the pot. <laughs> and he's like, let's get some false rumors about like CM Punk, Cody Rhodes, and John Moxley all being in the men's Royal Rumble match for WWE. And so Punk's like... I'm gonna have a little fun in social media. I'm gonna troll my fans. And he put up like old photos of himself at the airport. <laughs> I thought that was funny. But he, so basically, he was speaking with um, Abe Cannon of Chicago's 95.5 radio show about these false rumors that people were making up. And he kind of just was like, hey, I'm gonna just have fun with it. And instead of getting upset about it, just kind of troll them a little bit. That's why he put that picture up. And um, he basically <laughs> says that um, Punk was going to, people were making stuff up saying that he was going to be in the Rumble. And he was like, listen, I understand that people are really excited to see, you know, a lot of people returning. And he's like, but if you want to see me, then show up to AEW. Like, that's where <laughs> you'll find me. Um, <laughs> so same bat channel, same bat time, AEW. Yeah. <laughs> And, and so Punk's not a big fan of Twitter. And he, he said on the show, he's like, it's a cesspool and a garbage. I want to delete it off my phone. But he's like, every once in a while, it's also a ray of sunshine and fun stuff. <laughs> but um, wait, before we leave CM Punk, did you see that, like, Brian Danielson? Well, you, you watched Dynamite last night, yeah. right? And, like, well, Brian Danielson's like, hey, let's uh, let's team up. Yeah. Let's, let's super friends this out. I'm like, ooh, that would be fun. And you're going to do the review of um, of Dynamite, right? Yes, that'll be at 10 o'clock with Billy. Because I don't want to spoil it, but like, <laughs> you know, I, I've been waiting for that big match with him and MJF. Yeah, it was really intense and it went on way longer than I expected. And then when Brian Danielson came out, I was like, wait, is he going to fight with him? And then when he proposed that, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Yeah. It was epic. So stay tuned, you guys, for our review in just about like literally one hour one hour yes um so moving on to sean waltman um, it was announced that he was medically cleared to make a return to um in ring after undergoing knee surgery so um while he was recovering from surgery he made it known that he was interested in wrestling again um while wwe did bring in former stars for the royal rumble he happened to not be one of he showed up over at PWG. He yeah. like made a big, you know, surprise appearance, and he didn't wrestle, but like, yeah, he put his he put his face out there for the world. Like, I'm back. He dipped his feet in the water little by little, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, yeah. He actually and, gave them a heads up that he was going to be ready. For oh yeah, people. yeah. It was like a I'm here, I'm ready, and so he's actually scheduled to team up with Joey Janela against Matt Cardona and Brian Myers at. GCW's heartbreak on February 25th in Los Angeles. Yeah, that'll be exciting. I kind of like the cover to it. It looks like an album cover. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna see the, the sweet sounds of professional wrestling. I thought it was a little like interesting that he like told them, like, hey, I'm interested in the Royal Rumble and I'm available. And they were just like crickets. Yeah, because he was such a big freaking star in the NWO and yeah. Crazy. Yeah, it's it's surprising. It's definitely surprising. They do the things they don't do. 
Yeah. And in the last several months, as we know, WWE has released so many people from their main roster and NXT stars from their contract. Wow. Um, and yes. <laughs> yeah, and they, we know it's because of budget cuts, <laughs> which I mean, come on, guys, <coughs> they can afford it. I don't I don't, don't really understand budget cuts, but you know what? We'll move on. Um, so the stars that we saw leave the company included um, Karrion Cross, Nia Jax, Keith Lee, Maya Yim, Ember Moon, Davy Boy Jr. Smith, um, Oni Lorcan, Gran Metalik, um, Lynn Storado, Eva Marie, Frankie Monet, B Fab, Scarlett Bordeaux, Trey Baxter, Jesse Camilla, oh my God, <laughs> G Rama, Zayda Ramir, and Katrina. Cortez. Now they're all in that picture, hidden somewhere. <laughs> all of, okay, and, but then like the NXT wrestlers, they only had a thirty-day non-compete clause, and that expired back in December. So we have Lorcan, Monet, Baxter, Kamea, Rama, Ramir, and Cortez. But like everyone else, like Keith Lee, Karrion Cross, like those people have a ninety-day non-compete clause, and so. But that just ended, like, was it yesterday? Today? Yeah, yesterday. So Today. now they can go wherever they want. Yeah, so they can really sign with any promotion, like AEW, Impact, NJPW, NWA. I mean, you name it, they can do whatever they want to. <laughs> well, we, we both know that Taya Valkyrie has her new intern song. She's like, I am ready. This Wera Loca is ready to go again. And we hear in the back, La Wera Loca, La Wera Loca. <laughs> Alrighty, moving on to Ronda Rousey. She thinks um, Ember Moon for training her for the Royal Rumble, which I is probably totally sweet. I missed her. I mean, I know she's going by Athena now, which is totally cool, but I'm like, dude, I loved her. She was such a fun character on, like, NXT, and yeah, I want to see more of her. I'm, I'm putting it out there in the universe. Come on, <laughs> Athena. More of her. More of Manifestation. <laughs> like, someone we're not going to see more of. Oh. oh boy, Brian Kendrick. We're not seeing him for much longer. Wait, okay, so it was literally yesterday, right, that we announced that, like, so he got his release from WWE, which we yes. both know was like either a, like a 50 50 yes or no release. And then he got announced with huge match with AEW against John Moxley, like the top of the card here. Yes. And then, like 24 hours later, it is like canceled. Bananas canceled. I and it's for like some serious problem, not just like fun, fluffy news canceled. No, this is like serious, yet. serious allegations. Uh, he was questioning the truth about like the Sandy Hook um, shooting mm -hmm. back in, I think that was like 2010. But like, I mean, didn't you like live nearby? Yeah, I actually lived two towns, a few towns over. I lived like, I grew up in Trumbull, so that's like a 20 15 minute drive and like my school when that happened like went into lockdown because nobody knew like what was going to be happening he was on the loose so to me it's like very disrespectful when people say that because it's like i lived through that there's no way that that was fake like yeah. it's impossible um and yeah so i guess like there's like a video it's not even like well we he said she said it's like there is a video of him totally like downplaying the holocaust and all that fun crazy talk and so guess what <laughs> so wheeler yuda is taking your place against yeah. john Moxley. yeah oh you that get consequences for your actions so <laughs> power up for <laughs> dumb stuff one other seriously i mean come on he should know better especially with like the way social media is nowadays like everybody finds out any little thing that you say so. Yeah, yeah, you wear your bad glasses a couple days, and people are like, honey, you're not your best. And I'm like, okay, give do a girl a favor who's obviously sick. Give me some recommendations, my love. Make yeah. it a constructive criticism. Be like, you know, these would look so much better. And I'd be like, you know what? Thank you. I appreciate your looking out for me. Oh, there's nothing worse than a freaking troll. <laughs> I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I appreciate it. it doesn't work, but come on, finish it up nicely. Let me, let me down gently. Be like, yeah, yeah. better. And Send us like, a few links to some glasses. Yes, come on, fashion popo. At least give me some, you know, 
<laughs> constructive <laughs> criticism. <laughs> All right. Okay. I, I, I think I stole the morning jab a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking of which, let's just move on right to the morning jab. Dude, I don't even know what's more jabby than this. Talk, you know, within 24 hours, the Wrestleverse is like upside down. It yeah. was confirmed there there are no tinfoil hats here. No, no, that no. Shane McMahon is no longer with the WWE. Yeah. I When I saw this, I was like, there's no way. This has to be speculation. And then it was like confirmed. It's like... Oh, <laughs> so I, I guess he had a talent contract that was terminated and he hasn't worked as an, an executive for like years now. Yeah. Uh, so and, and once like the news got out, some fans on social media began, you know, everybody starts speculating and, you know, everybody wears a tinfoil hat in the WrestleVerse on Twitter, I feel like. It's all <laughs> speculation. And um, he began, so they began saying like, oh, I think he's going to end up at AEW. And while there is zero indication of this, like literally no indication at all, um, Dax um, Hardwood ended up posting to Twitter, like, holla at your boy. Yeah, because um, like FTR used to be a thing with Shane McMahon. And yeah. Yeah, so Dax and Cash Wheeler worked with Shane during their days when they were called the Revival in WWE. The Revival was also released. I mean, right now, it's all like, hopes and wishes and you know well wishes from FTR which is nice you know hey you got fired and they're like we got gotcha. you yeah gotcha. so you know by the way total total conspiracy there's nothing that says he's going to AEW but we're yeah, just had some friends there and you know it's good yeah. to have friends but it wouldn't be a total shocker if he did <laughs> no it... but like what's, what would he do at AEW would he be like a manager would he be like you know Jake the Snake Roberts and like <laughs> you know, coach and FTR coming down in a suit and, you know, pulling ankles out of the ring or I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that that's a good question. I wonder what he would do. And in regards to Shane, like we talked about yesterday, taking a lot of heat for there being numerous changes with the Rumble, it was confirmed by multiple sources yet again last night, like more articles came out saying that he was very frustrated backstage and it was because his ideas had been shut down by Vince McMahon like multiple times. Daddy um, said no. No means no. No means no. Even though we got the last the same last name, no means no. <laughs> um, and so this backstage talk was that like Shane was like basically throwing a temper tantrum, like, I can't do what I'm allowed to do. Why? Um oh, so he definitely was trying to put himself in the rumble. Like if he didn't get his way and he's throwing a temper tantrum, like it has to be because he was trying to put himself in. Um, yeah. And there was a lot of heat. I mean, if the heat makes it through the internet, it was, can you imagine how hot it was backstage? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sure there was, I mean, there was multiple people who said the tension backstage was. Ugh. And then, so Andrew Zarian was reporting that there were numerous changes and um, to what number your man, Bad Bunny, would be in the match. <laughs> and it was like a big concern with WWE because they like they don't want to like screw it up with such a big, you know, outside star. Yeah, I mean, I get that. I also saw on Twitter yesterday, people were like coming for Bad Bunny, like that he shouldn't have been a part of the Royal Rumble, that he should stick to music, like he is doing this to try to I gain. Trying to put the Bad Bunny in his lane. That yeah, yeah. Stay in your lane, but no, let him do what he wants. He wants to be crazy in the ring. You, you go for exactly. It. And then what bothered me is that people were like, "He's doing this to get for publicity," and I'm like, "Dude, he doesn't need it. He has two sold out tours. Like, he doesn't need the publicity. It's, it's for fun, and it's and, fun. and he obviously knows his market. He's like, my people, my people like <laughs> pro wrestling, and they like me." And I like it too. So why don't we just have a little bit of fun? Exactly. And so overall, with this whole Shane McMahon thing, it rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. It caused a lot of tension. And I'm kind of interested to see where we're going to see Shane end up in these next few months. 
Yeah. Well, so like they don't have Triple H anymore to feel yeah. like this nonsense. And then I guess Tyson Kidd, who's Natalia's man, by the way, they weren't there to do any of this producing. Producing is just basically like cat herding is from yeah. what I understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So moving on from all the Shane McMahon talk, let's go on to some fluffy news. Fluffy news. All right. On this week's Grillin' JR, Mr. Jim Ross himself gave an update on his health. Yes. Man, I feel like I'm talking to my swagger, you know, always getting my like <laughs> And I went to my doctor and my doctor said this. So well, he had a doctor's appointment again and he was advised not to return for a follow-up for 30 days. Miha, I am not going to see him for 30. That's great. <laughs> That's, thank you. But I'm glad he's making some progress. He, he is making progress because he said he was at the doctor's every day. Every day? Yeah, daily. What the heck do you do every day at the doctor's office? I don't know, but I thought that this was just an ankle injury because he fell. Well, yeah, he, he got like the black eye. Yeah. And so basically, his he says that while he is healing, his leg is still not fully healed. And he was actually ready and went back to work about 30 days way too early. And oh. the doctor was like, listen, buddy. Just because you might feel like you are feeling a little bit better, do not trick yourself because it's going to make things worse. So he's like, all right, I'll take a step back. He's like, I got a marching band rolling me down <laughs> to my spot every time. He's got that marching band music. He's like, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, moving on. We got like a couple different Hall of Fame things going on here. Yeah. Like there's a WWE Hall of Fame. And that was supposed to air on Peacock and the WWE Network on April 1st, right after SmackDown goes on the air on Fox. But it was unclear if it was going to be live or, or taped. And then, like, there was another big um, Hall of Fame going on, the Ring of Honor Hall of Fame. And who are the very first inductees, Lexi? Who are they? No other than the Briscoe Brothers. Oh, my Lord, the them boys oh boy look at their them faces boys. <laughs> yeah i'm trying not to like mix up these two hall of fames but you know the wwe and the roh i mean the bristol yes. the roh for like 20 years so let's not confuse the two <laughs> yeah so going back to the um wwe hall of fame so there was a lot of like people were wondering is it going to be live is it going to be taped like what's going on it was confirmed that the current plan which can always change, as we know. Um, change. Subject to change. Um, it's going to be airing live from 10.30 p.m. to 12 a.m. April 1st. Um, so it's going to be, the ceremony will not be sep like separately ticketed an event from be. SmackDown. Yeah. So anybody who goes to SmackDown that night can also stay for the ceremony if they want to. Dude, that's so weird. Do you know how, like, fancy pants these WWE people get for, the, like, the Hall of Fame ceremony? Really? Yeah, it's like a red carpet event, and it's so cute because you get to see, like, the girlfriends and boyfriends and spouses and kids of, like, all these wrestlers. And then there's, like, all these people in the stands with, like, their beer and nachos, like. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, at least they have the opportunity to, and they're not having to pay an extra ticket. That's oh, I don't even think I could stay up for that. I'm like, oh, all right, it's my big tent. Yep, I'm looking for my bed oh my gosh yeah because you were there from already what eight to watch the show and then oh no my... probably early it's like three hours long these shows oh my gosh i know they're gonna be like five six hours <laughs> i would get hangry <laughs> Give me those nachos dang it seriously <laughs> all right moving on so major league wrestling has announced the iconic legendary Ricky the Dragon. Oh my goodness. Ricky Steamboat. Yes. He's a super legend. He's gonna he's coming to MLW Superfight. And it's hosted by Grady Cole in Charlotte on February 26th. Yeah, so this is gonna be exciting. The legend is going to return to the hollow grounds of the Grady Cole Center where the dragon actually emerged as a main eventer and he's forever become a legend. So yeah, so like Hardcore wrestling fans I'm like, ooh, Ricky, the yeah. Dragon, come on. 
All and right. Our now Bellas. we're going to talk about the Bellas. Okay, so the Bellas podcast, Brie Bella was talking about how she was responding to all the yes, the yes chants, because like, you know, her man, everyone, yes, yes. yes. Okay, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Um, she said she started to hear the fans chanting yes, and that she went with it because she was going into her Brie mode. <laughs> <laughs> and so when she heard all the yeses, she immediately thought of like her man and like all this corniness about like the presence of Brian Danielson, you know. <laughs> She's like, even though he wasn't there, I could feel him in the moment. I'm like, aw. That's cute. That's so cute. Romeo and Juliet. All righty. <laughs> mushy, mushy pants. Mushy, mushy. And um, this week, um, the Bellas also were talking about working with Bianca Blair, Ronda Rousey, Lita, Charlotte Flair, Carmella, and Zelina. And basically we're like, listen, this was such a great inspiration um, for young fans for WWE because of like how young all these girls are and how freaking badass they are at their age. Like, Did, did you hear the guys talking? Of, they did like the pre-show and post-show for the Royal Rumble? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I think it was Noah. Anyways, one of the guys was talking about Bianca Belair, and they're like, that girl's a tank, right? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. They're like, tanks, they never lose when they're on the ground, but tanks are not meant to freaking fly through the air. That is, you know, she was not supposed to get up on the ropes and go flying, because that's the only time tanks lose. And I'm like, you're so freaking funny. <laughs> Bianca Belair's a tank. She is. That okay. is so funny. It yeah, I mean, both Brie and her sister did appear in the Royal Rumble, as we know, and um, Brie um, eliminated her twin, so. Well, yeah, because last time, Nikki eliminated Brie. Yeah. I, I wish there was a little more buildup, like a little more, like, no, yes, like, like a little more, like, you know, uh, it happened a little too fast. A lot yeah. of things happened too fast in the Royal Rumble. I'm like, really? Some, like, catty sister drama would have been yeah. cool. A little yeah. bit more in ring would have been fun. Yeah. But, you know, we got what we got, I guess. <laughs> okay. And then so Brie was also talking about, yeah, goodness, Brie, all these special <laughs> moments she had with her daughter, Birdie, after the rumble. And she had seen her mama and her aunt and this 30 women free for all. And I guess Nikki had some sweet support from her man, Artem, and her son, Matteo. Oh, mushy, mushy, miss. Yeah, the episode was super mushy and super emotional. I was like, oh my gosh, this does not feel like it's about wrestling. How is it so mushy? <laughs> Dang it, they're all moms now. I know, it changes. Alrighty, so from some fluffy news, let's keep it moving with Keeping It Strong style. All right, y'all. It We're still, I mean, this is like as long as Disney's 50th <laughs> anniversary kind of ordeal. New Japan Pro Wrestling, they're still celebrating their 50th anniversary event. They got this huge world lineup for March. There's going to be 16 live events in English. Yes. English for all of us who are limited to one language and half of another. Um, <laughs> so March, we're going to see, um, yeah, Goodness, March 1st. We're going to see, like, huge announcements. I mean, I have pictures of the lineup. But you have to All see, right, this is just for February. That is insane. They have an event going on, like... All, all through the month of February this month. So starting with their first one, which is going to be February 5th, which is this Saturday. They're going to have the New Beginnings USA Night 1, um, which will be really cool. And then they're technically starting like the i have this is all really confusing with the 50th anniversary like what? the celebration of it is like technically starting march 1st and like march is the month where they have so many events going on i mean look at this list of events it goes on and on it starts on the first and it ends on the 28th and it is non-stop we're gonna see so many things going on between the month of feb February and January. So this keeping a strong style section is going to get way more crazy within the next two months. Oh, I mean, I think Disney is celebrating their anniversary for like a year and a half. Yeah. Like 
Yeah, they gotta they gotta do it big. They gotta do it big forever. I gotta step it up on my birthday celebration and take some notes because I only celebrate one day. I don't get a whole year. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are we missing? Anything else? I'm like, if you got Rhonda, we got the Brian Kendrick scandal. Um. Oh yes, we do. So we had the um, Battle of Ooh, Los Angeles. Yes. Oh my gosh, how can I forget? <laughs> being sick can kill you so i've been like bula for like forever and of course you know excalibur did not invite me not yet i'm, I'm not on the cool list yet but uh da that's daniel garcia the red death he's yeah. only 23 years old y'all and he won the bola that is crazy he won the bola it's kind of like winning american idol like you are going on to like bigger and better things so like Ricochet's won it. Kenny Omega's won it. Sami Zayn won it when he was um, Generico. I mean, it like launches your career as if like as if Daniel Garcia hasn't been everywhere already. Yes, but uh, yeah. So let's see. And my one. Oh, go ahead. We have this other picture up of um. Oh, I can't remember his name. Yeah, it's Speedball Mike Bailey freaking yes. jumping off the balcony. Like, it was bananas. I can't wait to, like, watch this. I mean, you can only watch it if you're live. But, like, it's a tournament. So there's, like, all these rounds. And, like, I know at one point Leo Rush got hurt. Like, someone had thrown a beer in the ring. And, like, someone slipped on the beer. And Leo Rush got really hurt and had to go to the hospital. And, no. um, yeah, it's... um. It was definitely a little bit crazy. And like Wheeler, Wheeler Yuta was there too. He's off to some big things as well. That is awesome. I think we're going to have a killer next two months with New Japan. Now that we have English commentary, this is like a game changer. <laughs> yeah. But like, so before we go on, I'm looking for, no one's commenting. I'm like the only dork wanting to talk about this. <laughs> so Jonathan Gresham and MLW's Davey Richards, they withdrew from, from the event. Wow. And then like Leo Rush came in and then he was replaced later on by Buddy Matthews, who is a big name in New Japan Pro Wrestling right now. But uh, yeah, the freaking Red Death, Daniel Garcia, taking home the Bullet Championship. Congratulations, man. That's a big deal. Congrats. That is a huge deal, honestly. And he's what? Like He's 23. 23. That's insane. I, yeah. That doesn't, I can't wrap my head around that. <laughs> All, right. All right. No one else is excited about this. I keep looking for comments. I'm like, really? Really? I'm like the only one who wishes I was at Bola. All righty. Well, if anybody has any comments before we wrap up today's episode, please let us know before we head on out. Um, but we'll be here tomorrow again. Um, 9 a.m., you know where to see us. And that's all we have today for Kick-Ass. Yeah, and, and like, bring it. If you guys want to talk about something, like, hey, hey, check this out. Let's talk about whatever. And like, yeah. Yeah. Don't well, be afraid. We'll talk about anything the, in the Wrestleverse. Like, yeah, literally. Yeah, the Fight Kitties, we are here to, like, gossip and talk about what's going on in the Wrestleverse. And we want you to bring your stories, too. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for tuning in today. You guys are awesome. Please take a moment to leave a comment. Like, share, and subscribe. And of course, click the link down below for some more Fight Kitties content. Until next time, I'm Lexi. And I'm Lady J. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.